Horrid Henry Meets the Queen by Francesca Simon Read by Miranda Richardson Perfect Peter bowed to himself in the mirror. Your Majesty, he said, pretending to present a bouquet. Welcome to our school, Your Majesty. My name is Peter, Your Majesty. Thank you, Your Majesty. Goodbye, Your Majesty. Slowly, Perfect Peter retreated backwards, bowing and smiling. Oh, shut up, snarled Horrid Henry. He glared at Peter. If Peter said, Your Majesty, one more time, he would, he would... <gasps> Horrid Henry wasn't sure what he'd do, but it would be horrible. The Queen was coming to Henry's school. The real live Queen. The real live Queen with her dogs and jewels and crowns and castles and beef eaters and knights and horses and ladies in waiting. <gasps> was coming to see the Tudor wall they had built. Yet, for some reason, Horrid Henry had not been asked to give the Queen a bouquet. Instead, the head, Mrs. Oddbod, had chosen Peter. <laughs> Peter? <laughs> Why stupid, smelly, old, ugly toad Peter? It was so unfair. Just because Peter had more stars than anyone in the good as gold book, was that any reason to choose him? Henry should have been chosen. He would do a much better job than Peter. Besides, he wanted to ask the Queen how many TVs she had. Now he'd never get the chance. Your Majesty, said Peter, bowing. Your Majesty, mimicked Henry, curtsying. Perfect Peter ignored him. He'd been ignoring Henry a lot ever since he'd been chosen to meet the Queen. Come to think of it, everyone had been ignoring Henry. Isn't it thrilling, said Mum for the millionth time. Isn't it fantastic, said Dad, for the billionth time. No, Henry had said. Who'd want to hand some rotten flowers to a stupid Queen anyhow? Not Horrid Henry. And he certainly didn't want to have his picture in the paper and everyone making a fuss. Bow, bouquet, answer her question, walk away, muttered Perfect Peter. Then he paused. Or is it bouquet, bow? Horrid Henry had had just about enough of Peter showing off. You're doing it all wrong, said Henry. No, I'm not, said Peter. Yes, you are, said Henry. You're supposed to hold the bouquet up to her nose so she can have a sniff before you give it to her. Perfect Peter paused. No, I'm not, said Peter. Horrid Henry shook his head sadly. I think we'd better practice, he said. Pretend I'm the queen. He picked up Peter's shiny silver crown covered in fool's jewels, and put it on his head. Perfect Peter beamed. He'd been begging Henry to practice with him all morning. Ask me a question the Queen would ask, said Peter. Horrid Henry considered. Why are you so smelly, little boy? said the Queen, holding her nose. The Queen wouldn't ask that, gasped Perfect Peter. Yes, she would, said Henry. Wouldn't. Would. And I'm not smelly. Horrid Henry waved his hand in front of his face. Poo, said the Queen. Take the smelly boy to the tower. Stop it, Henry, said Peter. Ask me a real question, like my name or what year I'm in. Why are you so ugly, said the Queen. Mum, wailed Peter. Henry called me ugly and smelly. Don't be horrid, Henry, shouted Mum. Do you want me to practice with you or don't you? 
hissed Henry. Practice, sniffed Peter. Well, go on then, said Henry. Perfect Peter walked up to Henry and bowed. Wrong, said Henry. You don't bow to the Queen, you curtsy. Curtsy, said Peter. Mrs. Oddbod hadn't said anything about curtsying. But I'm a boy. The law was changed, said Henry. Everyone curtsies now. Peter hesitated. Are you sure? asked Peter. Yes, said Henry. And when you meet the Queen, you put your thumb on your nose and wriggle your fingers. Like this. Horrid Henry cocked a snook. <coughs> Perfect Peter gasped. Mrs. Oddbod hadn't said anything about thumbs on noses. But that's rude, said Perfect Peter. Not to the Queen, said Horrid Henry. You can't just say hi to the Queen like she's a person. She's the Queen. There are special rules. If you get it wrong, she can chop off your head. Chop off his head? Mrs. Oddbold hadn't said anything about chopping off heads. That's not true, said Peter. Yes, it is, said Henry. Isn't. Horrid Henry sighed. <sighs> If you get it wrong, you'll be locked up in the tower, he said. It's high treason to greet the Queen the wrong way. Everyone knows that. Perfect Peter paused. Mrs. Oddbod hadn't said anything about being locked up in the tower. I don't believe you, Henry, said Peter. Henry shrugged. Okay, just don't blame me when you get your head chopped off. Come to think of it, thought Peter. There was a lot of head chopping when people met kings and queens, but surely that was just in the olden days. Mum! screamed Peter. Mum ran into the room. Henry said I had to curtsy to the queen, wailed Peter, and that I'd get my head chopped off if I got it wrong. Mum glared at Henry. How could you be so horrid, Henry? said Mum. Go to your room. Fine! screeched Horrid Henry. I'll practice with you, Peter, said Mum. Bow, bouquet, answer her question, walk away, said Peter, beaming. The great day arrived. The entire school lined up in the playground waiting for the Queen. Perfect Peter, dressed in his best party clothes, stood with Mrs. Oddbod by the gate. A large black car pulled up in front of the school. There she is, shrieked the children. Horrid Henry was furious. Miss Battleaxe had made him stand in the very last row, as far away from the Queen as he could be. How on earth could he find out if she had 300 TVs standing way back here? Anyone would think Miss Battleaxe wanted to keep him away from the Queen on purpose, thought Henry, scowling. Perfect Peter waited, clutching an enormous bouquet of flowers. His big moment was here. Bow, bouquet, answer her question, walk away. Bow, bouquet, answer her question, walk away, mumbled Peter. Don't worry, Peter, you'll be perfect, whispered Mrs. Oddbod, urging him forward. Horrid Henry pushed and shoved to get a closer view. Yes, there was his stupid brother, looking like a worm. Perfect Peter walked slowly towards the Queen. Bow, bouquet, answer her question. Walk away, he mumbled. Suddenly, that didn't sound right. Was it bow, bouquet, or bouquet, bow? The Queen looked down at Peter. Peter looked up at the Queen. Your Majesty, he said. Now, what was he supposed to do next? 
Peter's heart began to pound. His mind was blank. Peter bowed. The bouquet smacked him in the face. Oh! Yelped Peter. What had he practiced? Ah, oh, yes. Now he remembered. Peter curtsied. Then he cocked a snook. Mrs. Oddbot gasped. Oh no! What had he done wrong? Ah! Oh, the bouquet! It was still in his hand. Quickly, Peter thrust it at the Queen. Smack! The flowers hit her in the face. How lovely, said the Queen. Whoa! wailed Peter. Don't chop off my head! There was a very long silence. Henry saw his chance. How many TVs have you got? shouted Horrid Henry. The Queen did not seem to have heard. Come along, everyone, to the display of Tudor daub-making, said Mrs. Oddbod. She looked a little pale. I said, shouted Henry, how many... A long, bony arm yanked him away. Be quiet, Henry, hissed Miss Battleaxe. Go to the back playground like we practised. I don't want to hear another word out of you. Horrid Henry trudged off to the vat of daub with Miss Battleaxe's beady eyes watching his every step. It was so unfair. When everyone was in their assigned place, Mrs. Oddbod spoke. Your Majesty, mums and dads, boys and girls, the Tudors used mud and straw to make daub for their walls. Miss Battleaxe's class will now show you how. She nodded to the children standing in the vat. The school recorder band played green sleeves. Henry's class began to stomp in the vat of mud and straw. How lovely, said the Queen. Horrid Henry stomped where he'd been placed between Dizzy Dave and Aerobic Owl. There was a whole vat of stomping children blocking him from the Queen, who was seated in the front row between Miss Battleaxe and Mrs. Oddbod. If only he could get closer to the Queen, then he could find out about those TVs. Henry noticed a tiny space between Brainy Brian and Gorgeous Gorinda. Henry stomped his way through it. Hey, said Brian. Ow, said Gorinda. That was my foot. Henry ignored them. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Henry pounded past greedy Graham and weepy William. Oi, said Graham. Stop pushing. Whoa, wept weepy William. Halfway to the front, Henry pushed past anxious Andrew and clever Claire. Help! squeaked Andrew, falling over. Watch out, Henry! snapped Claire. Almost there, just moody Margaret and jolly Josh stood in his way. Margaret stomped. Josh stomped. Henry trampled through the daub till he stood right behind Margaret. Squish! Squash! Squish! Squash! Stop stomping on my bit! Moody Margaret. Stop stomping on my bit, said Horrid Henry. I was here first, said Margaret. No, you weren't, said Henry. Now get out of my way. Make me, said Moody Margaret. Henry stomped harder. Squelch, squelch, squelch. Margaret stomped harder. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Rude Ralph pushed forward. So did Dizzy Dave. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Our Susan pushed forward. So did Kung Fu Kate. Stomp! 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 A tidal wave of mud and straw flew out of the vat. Splat! Miss Battleaxe was covered. Splat! Mrs. Oddbot was covered. Splat! The Queen was covered. Oops, said Horrid Henry. Mrs. Oddbot fainted. How lovely, mumbled the Queen. <laughs> <laughs>